As a neurologist, uh, it occurred to me that uh, many diseases uh, are ones of aging in which there's some failure of a neurotransmitter. Uh, there's been a conception for a long time that depression is a deficiency of serotonin. It's actually much more complicated than that. But we know there's a deficiency of acetylcholine in Alzheimer's disease uh, and a deficiency of dopamine in Parkinson's disease. Given that uh, some years earlier, endogenous cannabinoids had been discovered, anandamide and 2-aracodonoglycerol, I wondered what would a deficiency of these substances look like clinically. Um, and certainly we know when these are too low that there is a hypersensitization to pain, there can be nausea, uh, and many other manifestations that would fit with a number of very common illnesses for which we don't have a lot of established tissue pathology. So these would include migraine, irritable bowel, and fibromyalgia. Uh, as it turns out, these are comorbid conditions. If a person has one, they'll tend to have manifestations of either one or two of the others at some point in their life. And unfortunately, some people have all three at once. Um, so uh, I conceptualize this as a putative clinical endocannabinoid deficiency. Um, and uh, when I wrote the paper in 2004, I'd previously published in 2001 in a brief reform about this, there was already a body of literature that supported this kind of conceptual framework. Subsequently, however, uh, we've gotten more objective proof, and I'll just give one example. A study in Italy by Sarchielli et al., they actually measured cerebrospinal fluid uh, levels of anandamide and showed a very significant difference between migraineurs and people who did not have migraine. So this was the first strong objective proof of the theory. Subsequently, again, there's been a lot of evidence to go along with other disorders. Uh, endocannabinoid deficiency, for example, has been demonstrated in post-traumatic syndrome in people who were exposed uh, to the 9-11 uh, events, uh, and there have been many other examples. Cannabidiol, for people who are not f familiar with it, is usually the second most common cannabinoid uh, in the cannabis plant. Uh, it has some, some things in common with THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, in that both are anti-inflammatory and analgesic, uh, but then there's a parting of the ways. Cannabidiol actually counteracts many of the side effects of THC, such as anxiety, panic, uh, hallucinations. So the two are quite complementary to one another. One of the effects of CBD that uh, heretofore wasn't really developed medically was its anticonvulsant effect. Uh, but this is first noted uh, in uh, the early 70s. Uh, but recently it's been the subject of a lot of investigation culminating with the approval of a 98% pure cannabidiol preparation called Epidiolex uh, in 2018, approved by the FDA, and it's recently become available. Uh, certainly this has proven safe and effective and a great boon to severely affected children with Dravet and Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, among others.